Hi and welcome to my second vlog and my first critical reflection vlog. I wanted to make this vlog um, about limitations and specifically limitations that are imposed on females, individuals, um, and who imposes those limitations. After watching Shimamande Ngozi Adichie's TED talk on why we should all be feminists, it is clear that those who benefit most from the oppression of females tend to view feminism as a direct attack. This meaning that feminism in its roots seems to be a div divisive in nature. From the Politics of Reality, Essays in Feminist Theory by Marilyn Fry, it is a fundamental claim of feminism that women are oppressed. The word oppression is a strong word. It repels and attracts. It is dangerous and dangerously fashionable and endangered. It is much misused and sometimes not innocently. The statement that women are oppressed is frequently met with the claim that men are oppressed too. We hear that oppressing is oppressive to those who oppress as well as to those they oppress. Some men cite as evidence of their oppression their much advertised inability to cry. It is tough, we are told, to be masculine. By not accepting the state of oppression that women face, men continue to uphold and perpetuate the cycle of oppression. These limitations are incurred through societal norms and then perpetuated by the very idea that women are not as oppressed or less oppressed than those who are oppressing see fit. By those who oppress continuing to gain power from the oppression, there is no sight to see where limitations end. It seems that this concept of oppression is popular and also tends to create a system where how do we tell when a limitation crosses a boundary from a societal limit to an oppressive state? For example, this idea that men are unable to cry and that masculinity can be limiting seems to excuse the oppression rather than become part of the oppression that we see in this idea that femininity is wrong and masculinity is positive. Marilyn Fry goes on to make this argument on page 10 that the state of oppression, she writes, that in a social structure, none of us are really truly free. There are always going to be limits on everyone. But the idea here is that from what she writes, from what I have already said here, it is clear that if one wants to determine whether a particular suffering, harm, or limitation is part of someone's being oppressed, one has to look at it in context in order to tell whether it is an element in an oppressive structure. One has to see if it is part of an enclosing structure of forces and barriers which tends to the immobilization and reduction of a group or category of people. One has to look at how the barrier or force fits with others and to whose benefit or determinant it works. As soon as one looks at examples, it becomes obvious that not everything which frustrates or limits a person is oppressive. When Shimamande spoke in her TED talk, she mentioned that feminism in her area was considered a dirty word, a negative word. And it's important to understand that while feminism in its root is arguing for equality of men and women, because those in power are cisgendered, white, straight males, they benefit from the system of oppression against females, meaning that they are less inclined to understand or to respect this idea of feminism, and therefore it seems oppressive against them because they feel oppressed from their system of power being targeted. Shimamanda in her TED talk mentions that it is important to note that it is people who shape our culture. Until we have a culture of people who are willing to accept the oppression of women, analyze it and respond to it adequately, meaning that men need to accept the oppression of women, it is necessary for them to accept the oppression before it is able to change or be shaped. And as Shimamanda mentioned, 
feminism is and should be for everybody. So that's going to do it for my first Critical Reflection vlog. Um, I will see you guys in a few weeks again. Um, hope you're having a great summer. Goodbye.